All right, welcome back to Total Extreme Wrestling 2020. Cell Jaded here, playing Monday, week 4 of February 2006. My name is Alex, and before we get to the main show, uh, I did screw up a little bit. Uh, I had a couple of angles prepped for the pre-show that I wanted to uh, show everyone and uh, forgot to hit the record button, unfortunately. So uh, just to recap here quickly at the end. Uh, so the, the pre-show angle here was the Mexicals were booked in a pre-show match by Shane McMahon. And then uh, they were facing a, a couple of lower card teams. Uh, the full-blooded Italians were involved. And uh, yeah, at first, uh, Psychosis and uh, Juventud Guerrera uh, wrestled a tag team match uh, on the pre-show. And then Shane McMahon, at the, conc at the conclusion of that match, when the Mexicals won, uh, said they'd now be wrestling another tag team match on the pre-show. And then we had Super Crazy and Psychosis uh, facing another lower card tag team. And then after winning that match, the Mexicals were then informed by Shane McMahon that they'd be wrestling another tag team match uh, on the on the pre-show. And this time it was Super Crazy and Juventud uh, wrestling that match. So three matches in the pre-show. Now the Mexicals had to go through three teams. And uh, Shane McMahon, uh, at the, uh, the culmination of all that effort, uh, has congratulated all three men because now they will be opening no way out. So time for their big reward. They get absolutely no opportunity to rest and recover, and they will be wrestling uh, Jamie, Jamie Noble and Kid Cash uh, when no way out uh, comes on the air, which is now imminent. So uh, yeah, Shane McMahon uh, came to play on this occasion and has gone full heel here and has uh, uh, put the, the Mexicals in a real, real tough position because they've just wrestled three teams They've already received a lot of punishment. They're exhausted. And Shelly Martinez here by their side uh, uh, will be looking on uh, with bated breath as No Way Out uh, comes on the air. So we're going to switch over to the main show uh, right now uh, where we will be uh, very shortly rejoining the Mexicals and Shane McMahon back at ringside. And as the crowd counts down, three, two, one, here we go. It is the main show of No Way Out. Pre-show is done. And here we are on the main card with Randy Orton. Who else? In his dressing room watching the show. So Randy Orton has arrived. He's got his own private dressing room. He's got his own heel spread, the snacks, uh, the comfy sofa. He is going to kick back. He is going to relax because although he's not wrestling tonight, he is going to be very interested to see what happens to Dave Batista in the main event because he's got two huge challenges in Bobby Lashley and Mark Henry uh, in that triple threat match. And Randy Orton's going to enjoy watching these three men tear each other apart, safe in the knowledge that he has a title shot against one of them, you would think, uh, some, some day down the line. Uh, of course, Randy Orton is our Royal Rumble winner, so he is taking it easy tonight. And uh, you can bet he's going to be healing it up here from his uh, very own private dressing room. So uh, Randy Orton, as he turns on the TV, though, uh, the first thing that we see is Batista, the world heavyweight champion, who's just pulled up to the building in his sports car, gets out looking like a star. He's got the title on his shoulder. And here he is. So Batista has arrived here at No Way Out. And uh, Randy Orton sitting down there. Scope out uh, what's going to happen with Dave and that world title picture. But that uh, is uh, coming up much later in the show as our main event. And for now, we've got our ma first match to get to. So, uh, uh, following on from the pre-show... Shane McMahon and the Mexicals are still at ringside. The Mexicals, of course, were put through a, an unfair gauntlet of tag matches by Shane McMahon. And it is uh, Shane here who uh, has got uh, just one more unfair stipulation for the Mexicals. So not only have they been through that gauntlet of pre-show matches already and are kind of looking a bit worse for wear after uh, wrestling so many teams already, but Shane McMahon now is also stating that this tag team match that they are involved in at the top of the hour is going to be a handicap match. So we were waiting to find out which of the two Mexicals would be competing uh, against Shane's men, Cash and Noble. We now know that Shane McMahon is inserting Joey Mercury and Johnny Nitro, the WWE Tag Team Champions no less, into this match as well, joining Cash and Noble's team. Meaning, this is going to be a four-on-three handicap match. So not only have the Mexicals had to wrestle several times already, they are now wrestling with a man down, essentially, uh, in this handicap match here uh, at No Way Out. So uh, Shelly Martinez, of course, uh, not happy with this, and neither are the rest of her men. But that is the situation. <clears throat> Shane McMahon now has really put the screws to the babyfaces. 
So his everything uh, everything going just the way he wants here as uh, No Way Out uh, starts in earnest. So here we go. Cash and Noble alongside Eminem versus the Mexicals in our opening handicap tag team match. All right, and a decent match at that. So it is Cash and Noble's team getting the win here with the WWE champions by their side when it's Johnny Nitro getting the pin. And, of course, the story here, uh, as well as a little bit of interference there for Molina, we should add, but nonetheless, the story here is that the Mexicals, of course, have been through just have just been through too much this evening already. They're exhausted. They're a man down. And they fight very valiantly in this match. Uh, and these guys really uh, kind of uh, put on uh, the best show that they could and the best match that they could. But in the end, the Mexicals have fallen victim to the numbers game. And they have lost here in the opener. So, uh, very disappointing when the heels go over in the opener, isn't it? But, uh, you know, you've got to do it sometimes, folks. Keep people on their toes and all that. So, uh, Shane McMahon now, of course, after the match, looking triumphant as he stands over the exhausted baby faces there, the Mexicals, looking like he wrestled the match himself there. So, a total prat, Shane McMahon, healing it up here. Good stuff from him. And, uh, yeah, good work from all men involved in our opening contest. Good stuff. Next, we've got dual shots here of Bobby Lashley and Mark Henry with Batista in the background here as uh, these two men warm up for the main event later tonight. So Batista, of course, will be warming up soon himself. But here he's kind of scoping out his challenges. No words said between these three men. It's just Batista scoping out the competition, getting a look at what's going on with Bobby Lashley on the weight machine there. Probably Mark Henry doing the same, uh, kind of working out, getting ready, psyched up, warmed up, ready for this huge match where they will have an opportunity to become world heavyweight champion if they can just beat uh, one of the other two men in that triple threat match coming up in the main event. But before we get there, we've got to check in on Randy Orton, of course, uh, and he's making a call backstage because he needs more ice in his Coke. So Randy Orton healing it up backstage. Love to see it. <laughs> and then we have got a video recap of the feud between The Miz and Matt Hardy, featuring Trinity, of course. So this is part of our Holy Trinity storyline where we're imagining Trinity and Matt Hardy uh, kind of uh, uh, came into the business originally as friends when they were younger. And then Trinity, as she started turning into uh, a kind of a woman that Matt Hardy didn't want to be around anymore, uh, Trinity has made it her mission to ruin Matt Hardy's life. And she has enlisted the help of The Miz, her client, and The Miz... After successfully winning the Cruiserweight Championship on, the, on a previous episode of SmackDown, has agreed to help Trinity in that mission. Trinity's helped him. He's ready to help her. And together, they're going to ruin Matt Hardy. And they, uh, did a great, they made a great start on doing just that when, uh, when Miz and Trinity uh, extinguished a lit cigar on Matt Hardy's palm uh, and burned the man, quite literally. And uh, yeah, Matt Hardy uh, coming into this uh, match with a taped up hand and you can bet that he is begging begging for an opportunity to get back at the Miz uh, kind of for what he did on SmackDown. So a bitter grudge match coming up. And as you could probably guess, wrestling is not the point in this one because it is Matt Hardy and Miz going to an uncontrollable brawl that leaves the referee no choice but to disqualify both men. It's clear that these two men did not come here with any interest in wrestling. They just came here for a fight. More so in Matt Hardy's case, let's say. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, uh, that's quite a long match for a double DQ result. Um, that's just because the video game, uh, like... Uh, uh, finessing the times for all the segments uh, is is a bit of a uh, a bit of an involved business. So in the abstract sense, yeah, you would not have a double DQ like that in real life on pay per view, I doubt. But uh, for video game terms, it you know it, it's just what it is. It's just the best way to kind of organize the segments so everything flows seamlessly and you've got the right percentages of match to angle time and that kind of stuff. So a bit of a long match for a double DQ, uh, but the story here is clear. Matt Hardy and the Miz just want to fight and eventually it gets to the point where the referee cannot control these two men anymore and uh, has to throw the match out but uh, that does not mean the fight is over because afterwards Trinity urges the Miz to flee now as Matt Hardy looking like a man possessed just continues fighting Miz and uh, eventually chases him through the backstage area so the Miz is not getting away easy Matt Hardy is pursuing him and uh, yeah cameraman's on the run now to keep track of uh, where these two brawl to next so uh, yeah, that will not be the last of that segment, I assure you. 
And speaking of which, we are back with Randy Orton once again, who uh, isn't even paying attention to the show anymore. That's how much of a heel this guy is, because uh, he is relaxing uh, and making some personal phone calls from his private dressing room. So Randy Orton here, running up the phone bill on No Way Out. Love to see it. And uh, then we have Rey Mysterio, who says he will defeat Shane McMahon clean tonight. And Shelly Martinez saying that she will stand by Ray as hopefully he does just that. So story here is that Shane McMahon, of course, uh, in his failure, uh, previous failures to uh, to uh, subjugate the Mexicals, let's say, uh, took out his frustrations on Rey Mysterio because Rey Mysterio is their partner in crime, uh, if you like, their, their buddy. That's the way Shane sees it anyway. So Shane has been, uh, whatever chance he can get, uh, cheap shotting, Rey Mysterio, uh, kind of putting him through tables, you name it. Ray, uh, Sh Shane McMahon just seems to be taking all his frustrations out on Rey, and Rey has had enough and challenged Shane McMahon uh, to a, an offer to a match that he cannot refuse. So this is Rey now versus Shane McMahon. And a, yeah, a bit of a grudge match for Rey at this point. But uh, yes, Shane McMahon here. He's geared up backstage now. He's with his allies, of course. They're all celebrating that win over the Mexicals earlier in the match. And Shane McMahon is saying to his allies as they offer to accompany him to ringside, you know what? Don't worry about it, because I got this. So Shane McMahon feeling very confident here. Everything's coming up, Shane, uh, tonight at No Way Out. And uh, yeah, he's so confident that he's going to go out to that ring alone and face uh, Rey Mysterio without any uh, outside help. So here you go, Shane McMahon and Rey Mysterio in what could be a clean match for a change. Let's see. All right. So, okay, well, Shane a little bit off his game there, but uh, uh, Rey Mysterio more than happy uh, to pick up the slack because it is Rey Mysterio defeating Shane McMahon with the frog splash there. So a real great effort from these two. Shane McMahon, of course, uh, Rey Mysterio, of course, especially. Uh, we've talked about it before. This man can do no wrong at the moment. He's got the momentum. He's got the star quality. He's got the public support behind him. Uh, everything. Everything that Rey Mysterio touches turns to gold on this save. And yeah, when you need a, a good match for your SmackDown brand, this man should always be at the top of the list. And uh, yeah, even with uh, kind of occasional wrestler Shane McMahon here, uh, Rey Mysterio has delivered the goods once again. So great match from these two. Exactly what we wanted to see. And Rey Mysterio now taking a, a moment to celebrate with Shelley as Shane uh, can do nothing but seethe as he retreats up the rampway. So a little bit off his game, unfortunately, Shane, but nonetheless uh, did put in a good performance. And uh, yeah, nothing to be ashamed of here, losing to a huge star like Rey Mysterio. Uh, and yeah, a little bit of measure of revenge, perhaps, for Shelley Martinez, who who saw her, her Mexico family kind of beaten, beaten earlier in the show. So here, a little bit of revenge uh, from via by proxy via Rey Mysterio. So good, good stuff for her. And then heading to the back, uh, well, uh, you wouldn't call this good stuff. Uh, maybe you'd call this bad stuff because it is the Miz and Trinity here in a piece of uh, very nasty business as uh, they now flee the arena with Matt Hardy chasing them through the streets. So like what a scene this has turned into. What a state. The Miz and Trinity running for their lives through the streets of God knows where as uh, Matt Hardy gives chase uh, desperate to tear the Miz uh, apart limb from limb. So uh, yeah, we're definitely not done with this fight. It is continuing on to the streets folks uh, but nonetheless uh, we are now back with Randy Orton who is now fooling around with a video camera in his dressing room so Randy Orton here the crowd are absolutely sick of seeing this guy uh, at this point he is milking this heel heat for all he can all he's worth as a screwing around there what are you doing Randy backstage uh, and then we cut back now to the backstage area where we have dual shots of Melina psyching up Aja Kong and, and her, her entourage of women, including Katie Lee and Gillian Hall. And then on the other side, as we switch over, it's Akira Hokuto here alongside her uh, Joshi wrestlers who are ready to hit the ring and face Melina's crew in an eight-woman tag team match. So the story here, of course, is that Melina faced Akira at the Royal Rumble to kind of determine who would be the top gal in the women's division, uh, such as it is on SmackDown anyway, only for the Aja Kong to debut, uh, to join Melina as kind of the top heel, and they beat the and she beat the crap out of Akira, did uh, Aja Kong, and that made uh, Akira easy pickings for Melina on that occasion. So now we've got an eight-woman tag team match. Hopefully for Akira, it's a chance at revenge, but nonetheless, uh, a big showcase here uh, for our women, so hoping for a good rating. 
Okay, well, not terrible. And there you have it. So it is Akira, of course, on this occasion. We couldn't have another heel team go over in a big tag match, could we? It is Akira's team, Risen Sun there. Uh, the team of Akira Hokuto, Ayako Hamada, Meiko Setamura, and Michiku Ob Omokai here getting the win uh, when Akira... Uh, pins uh, Jillian Hall with a Northern Lights bomb. So, unfortunately, Akira did not get to pin Melina on this occasion. We've left the door open if we wanted to uh, do something a, a bit later with those two. But for now, that is the final word. Uh, the, the the fight was a fierce one. Aja Kong, of course, involved as the top heel. But eventually, the baby faces prevail. They isolate the lackey, Jillian Hall, and they get the win here. And Melina, unfortunately, has lost out at No Way Out. And then after the match, it is Akira Hokuto and her women going their separate ways after claiming victory. So that brings this storyline here to an end. It was only planned to be a short one. Uh, it was a bit of a bait and switch. If you've been following from the beginning, you, you'll, you'll know that originally it was focusing on Akira arriving to the WWE and looking like the big dom dominant contender. And then halfway through, we... We uh, switched it, swerved and bro, and uh, got the Ascendancy of Melina storyline. We switched it out to make it more about Melina uh, being kind of the top heel on the women's division uh, uh, side of SmackDown. So uh, very much an opportunity for Melina to work with some established talent and kind of improve her skills and get her more experience. So that was kind of the idea. Some of the women we've got here uh, I can reveal now are on, lim are on uh, kind of short-term contracts. That was kind of the plan to kind of uh, heat up Melina, really. That was the idea. With Akira being kind of a, a veteran and occasional wrestler at this point, uh, it's been a real good usage of her. But I've, I've enjoyed her so much on this save. Uh, we will consider doing more stuff in the future. But for now, that brings the story of Akira and Melina to an end here in conclusive fashion at No Way Out. And then, heading to the back once again, it's not only The Miz, Trinity, and Matt Hardy we're rejoining, but Randy Orton as well, because The Miz and Trinity now, they've, they've, they're they back in the building, so they've, they've managed to re-enter the building somehow uh, in their attempts to get away from Matt Hardy. They think the coast is clear, they think they've escaped, but of course, that old cliche, you've got to love it, they're not safe at all, because Matt Hardy appears like a bat out of hell, was waiting for them, and the fight continues now through the backstage area, and poor Randy there spills his coke that he's only just got freshened up, and uh, yeah, uh, I got a beverage here, man! Uh, didn't seem to work this time, uh, you know, it's just one of those things, isn't it? So Randy Orton loses a drink, and Matt Hardy's lost his damn mind, because he is not letting The Miz escape uh, in any fashion tonight. Uh, well, if he gets his way, anyhow. And then next, we've got Roddy Piper here. I'm going to talk about going from uh, one shade of grey to another. It is Roddy Piper taunting William Regal backstage. So a little bit of interview time with Roddy Piper. Uh, going off on a, you want to talk about coke. How about this coked up promo from Roddy Piper here. Uh, really laying into William Regal. Of course, the story being that William Regal and Roddy Piper, they kind of saw... Uh, a lot of themselves in each other to begin with and it looked like these two men kind of were forming a connection but that soon evaporated when William Regal went on this hard man streak of stretching out younger guys uh, beating the crap out of them after matches Roddy Piper sees this as exploitative as an old school kind of brother he's seen it one too many times of uh, guys getting taken advantage of and Roddy Piper has had enough he is, ste stand he is stepping up to Regal and uh, from one street fighter to another he's ready to teach him a lesson but William William Regal here appears as Roddy Piper's giving this promo and promises Piper a, a bloody good hiding. So, uh, well, he'll, he'll probably say it in more serious tones than that, but that's the, the gist of it anyway. So William Regal and Roddy Piper in a, in a, in a, a physical match here, no doubt, uh, as our next feature on No Way Out. All right, and uh, good heat and decent wrestling. So that's exactly where we want to be. So uh, William Regal carrying Roddy Piper here, of course, uh, uh, definitely in, in decline at this point in 2006. So we kept the match short and made sure that kind of William Regal was uh, directing traffic in there. But a good match, good to see this. And it is Regal, as you can see there, uh, getting a quick win over Roddy Piper, all things considered, because... Again, this wasn't going to be much of a wrestling match on this occasion. This was going to be more of a physical kind of bout. Not the overbooked, overbooked, overbooked chaos that Miz and Matt Hardy is, but more of a kind of legitimate, gritty feel to this one. Uh, two guys just beating the crap out of each other. And you would not expect a match like that to go very long, would you? Because uh, in real life, it certainly wouldn't. So why should it be the difference here? So William Regal here. Uh, uh, the referee has to, has to award the decision to Regal after Roddy Piper basically 
physically uh, can no longer defend himself. So William Regal just pounds the living crap out of Roddy Piper, gets the better of him eventually. And uh, yeah, uh, a huge statement here by Regal beating up Roddy Piper. And that is going to continue after the match. We've seen it before. William Regal taking advantage of younger guys. Well, now it's a taste of that medicine for Roddy Piper, one of the older guys. So Regal now teaching Piper a lesson, beats him down after the bell. And a nice little gory blade job here from Roddy Piper. One last blade job for the road. It is William Regal raising his bloody knuckles here to a shower of booze. So William Regal is not playing around. And uh, Roddy Piper has felt the brunt of it here. With Regal in very dominant fashion and going over strong on Roddy Piper. So next up, uh, as we cut away from that to something completely different. It is Matt Hardy and The Miz, whose brawl now is continued back to ringside so uh, as the as that previous match is kind of wrapping up and filtering out it is the miz and matt hardy finally brawling back to ringside trinity there by both of their sides it yelling at, the, at both of them yelling at everyone that's trying to uh, all the officials that are trying to break this up what a scene of chaos here and then as we finish it it is matt hardy who tries to shove miz's face into a lighter so Matt Hardy pulls a lighter out of his pocket. He tries to shove Miz's face into it, but Trinity kind of intervenes and helps the Miz escape. The referees are there, and Matt Hardy finally, finally, after all this chaos, is separated from the Miz, and Matt there just gets his opportunity to stand tall in the ring after uh, quite a piece of business. So, yeah, uh, Matt Hardy was burned by the Miz and Trinity, and he tried to burn the Miz back, but wasn't successful on this occasion. But nonetheless, it is Matt standing tall as the heels flee uh, with their with, with their tails tucked between their legs. And uh, yeah, that's the final word here from <laughs> Matt Hardy and the Miz. So uh, good stuff from them too. And then it is a battered Roddy Piper now being stretched out of the arena. So Roddy Piper in a bad way here after he was left bloody by William Regal. But Regal is back to finish the job. So William Regal not done uh, with Roddy Piper yet. So he is approaching the stretcher here and he is readying maybe the brass knucks. He isn't ready uh, for Roddy Piper uh, to, to let Roddy Piper go just yet. He just needs one last punch. But he's not going to get that last punch because look who it is who steps in the way to block Regal. It is the Undertaker who stands between Regal and Piper as they're loading him into the ambulance here. Uh, uh, and it is Regal and uh, Undertaker staring each other down. And Undertaker simply says, look, you made your point. So Undertaker with that line kind of saying to Regal that you won't be getting to Roddy Piper while I'm standing here. I can guarantee you that. And Regal just says to the Undertaker in response that hurting people is the point. And uh, yeah, Regal not backing down from the dead man, even with this dominant display. That is the final word on this for the moment. Roddy Piper will make it out of here, thanks to The Undertaker. Some swift intervention from him, but uh, good stuff here. Strong segment from both guys. Love to see it. And speaking of which, it is Batista now warming up himself backstage, of course. We saw him earlier checking out Bobby Lashley and Mark Henry, seeing what his competition was up to. And now he's warming up himself, ready for the main event match coming up very soon now. And uh, collects his title belt and heads to the ring. So Batista, Bobby Lashley, Mark Henry, the video recap of Batista's title reign here and the issue that has been bubbling between his two champions. Of course, Randy Orton is involved in that story as well. But for now, it is Batista, Mark Henry and Bobby Lashley in a triple threat match to decide who the champion is going to be. So, Mark Henry, of course, was defeated by Batista at the Royal Rumble, but not without controversy because Bobby Lashley, it is felt, uh, assisted Dave Batista at that time. And Mark Henry has not forgotten it. He wanted his rematch and he, he became number one contender. If we remember when Bobby Lashley, uh, when he beat Bobby Lashley again, uh, another match that had controversy to it. So Bobby says that he's got a claim uh, to, to the title. Mark Henry says he's got a claim to the title. And Batista more than happy to wrestle both of these men. But as we saw in the last episode of SmackDown, 
Batista has not been playing his best game recently. The mind games of Randy Orton have been getting to him. He slipped up last week when he lost a tag match and kind of brawled with Bobby Lashley uh, over that failure. So this is it now. Dave Batista really has to regroup and show everyone uh, that he can still be the World Heavyweight Champion because he has a pair of very, very hungry challengers here. Uh, Mark Henry, he's starving. Bobby Lashley is ravenous. This is it. The winner of this triple threat match will be your World Heavyweight Champion. Let's get it underway. All right. And in a bout that had great heat and good wrestling, it is Dave Batista defeating Bobby Lashley and Mark Henry in the three-way match when Batista pins Mark Henry with a Batista bomb once again. And uh, we can only uh, assume here that, again, there was some shenanigans involved with the uh, second rope to uh, afford that. But I like the idea that maybe it was Bobby Lashley that set Mark Henry up for the pin, and uh, Batista got the better of Bob, and uh, in, in turn got the better of Mark. And so inadvertently, it was Bobby Lashley who cost Mark Henry uh, the title again, but this time, of course, it was uh, kind of in, 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 as part of a fair fight, of course, in a triple threat match, no disqualification, anything goes, all that, all that good stuff. So here, uh, I'm actually kind of surprised this match was as good, uh, got a good rating, uh, uh, as good a rating as that, because the last time Batista and Mark Henry stepped into the ring, um, uh, they uh, we had psychology penalties uh, that I was anticipating here again. Uh, but one thing, I did a little bit of reading up on this, and uh, one thing that you can do here is use the protection notice so to make sure that um, the kind of flaws of weaker workers are, are hidden during a match. So... Uh, yeah, I've just noticed this that you can do that and give a bonus to to uh, to certain wrestlers who who might be performing slightly weaker than others. So we use the protection notice here on Bobby Lashley. Um, I think that might have uh, minimised some of the psychology penalties a little bit as well. So overall, it seems like a pretty a much better match than I was expecting here. A, an improvement on the Royal Rumble, uh, and so yeah, I can't complain. Uh, I, even though the SmackDown side tends to be a bit weaker in terms of work rate, uh, <laughs> and we get lower segments in the main event matches, at least for the moment. Uh, yeah, I'm actually quite pleased with this one. It seems like uh, it, uh, it uh, definitely delivered uh, over expectations on this occasion. Uh, not hugely so, but uh, definitely enough. So a good main event here, and uh, really uh, good to see this as we finally uh, kind of get this story in order here. Definitively, Dave Batista worked hard, and he earned the title, and he earned he he earned the right to defend his title here because uh, he looked good doing it. So um, good good job from Lashley and Henry. But it is Batista who is still your World Heavyweight Champion. And then after the match, of course, to continue their issue, Lashley and Henry now uh, in another disagreement over, over what happened during that uh, climactic moments of the match. Henry and Lashley getting in each other's face and the brawl is on. Lashley and Henry, they have brawled to the back. Uh, they're out of the picture. And then what do we see next? But Randy Orton, we've been seeing him. Every single, we've been seeing him in almost every segment uh, here after a match here at No Way Out. And we are back again as the main screen now. Uh, we cut to the main screen and Batista's watching. It is Orton who catches Batista's attention there. So Randy Orton with a bit of a golf clap, condescending kind of heel insult perhaps, uh, getting uh, Dave Batista's attention and congratulating him on such a dominant win here at No Way Out. So Batista now turns his attention to the main screen. And can you guess what is going to happen the moment that Dave Batista decides to do that? Well, if you guessed that Batista turns around just in time to catch Orton before he can hit a stealthy RKO, you would have been right. Because this time, Dave Batista was ready. He saw through Randy Orton's illusions. He saw through the tricks. He had his head in the right space. He came prepared here at No Way Out. Remember, earlier in the show, we saw Randy screwing around with that video camera. Well, there was a reason. Uh, everything that you just saw on the video screen that Dave Batista saw was recorded. And uh, yeah, Randy Orton was trying to pull a fast one here on Dave once again. We saw it before when Randy Orton upset Dave at the Royal Rumble by interrupting his celebration. He's tried the same thing again here. But Dave Batista is, uh, yeah, you're not going to fool this man twice. Uh, and Dave Batista here was ready for the machinations of Randy Orton. So now with Randy Orton, his plan kind of ruined. He has to stare down this man <laughs> face to face. And there is no physicality between them. Batista, you know, 
<laughs> with a smile on his face. You nearly got me, Randy, but not this time because Batista came prepared. So, has Randy Orton gotten too predictable? I guess that's the story here. We'll just have to wait and see what the uh, the, the legend killer tries next. But here, Randy Orton, unfortunately, not successful on spoiling Dave's big celebration because Dave Batista goes right back at it, get right back to it, while Randy Orton slinks out of the ring. And there you have it. Dave Batista is back at 100%. He is operating at his peak mental capacity as well. And he is still your world heavyweight champion as the pay-per-view comes to a close. And an overall rating, a 72. So uh, ne never as strong as the Raw side, of course, uh, these shows. But overall, a pretty damn good effort here uh, at No Way Out, of the SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view. And uh, a definite improvement on New Year's Revolution that the Raw side had uh, for its own uh, uh, lower prestige uh, pay-per-view. Uh, so, yeah. Great stuff here from the SmackDown side. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Cell Jaded playing Total Extreme Wrestling 2020 for Sunday, week 3 of February 2006. I do hope you enjoyed it. Next time we come back, we'll be heading into the final week of February with our next episode of Monday Night Raw. See you then. <laughs>